Hi everybody, Pat O'Neill here with Prepper Skills, and what I want to talk about today, it's, it's flu season around the clinic. We're seeing a lot of people coming in with colds, uh, all of the itises, pharyngitis, sinusitis, tonsillitis, gastroenteritis, and these are a lot of things that can really be, be handled symptomatically at the house. So everyone knows we talk a lot about trauma and having a first aid kit and everything. What we're going to talk today is about a medicine chest, having a medical kit. First aid is for injury. Medical kit is for illness. So this is the one I have at my house. We, we pretty much keep it in the laundry room. You can put it anywhere you want. Now I know you're probably looking at this thing going, wow, that is really big. Um, but you're going to see it, it pretty much handles a lot of what we need to, to deal with, um, especially if you're, you're having adults and children living at the house. You know, the kids are going to need different types of medicines than, than what an adult is going to use. So you're going to need more space. Um, I find that this is more than adequate. We picked this up at a, at a local department store. Uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, like a Walmart or a Kmart or something like that, but uh, easily found anywhere. So let's go over the items that I have in here. Uh, again, you can revert to looking at the labels. Um, try to label it so that way you're not having to look for stuff and then everything gets all out of order and it just becomes a nasty mess. Um, so let's go through the items one by one and... I assure you, I pulled all of this stuff out of here. It does fit nice and neatly back in there. So hold on just a sec while I switch to get behind the camera. So again, here's a close-up of our kit. I tried to arrange everything by common sense items. And we'll kind of go through everything just a little bit at a time. So... Everything over here that you see in this column, these are just extra prescription meds. Everybody's got them laying around. So I try to throw these in the top shelf. Uh, most of them are sinus related. In the top shelf, I've got a lot of sinus stuff here. So you see the, uh, the Sufedrin PE. Uh, it's an Equate brand. Um, always try to go generic if you can. You're going to save yourself money usually. This is basically just a combination of chlorpheniramine and phenylephrine. It's a short-acting antihistamine with a decongestant. Absolutely wonderful for uh, stopping post-nasal drip, opening up blocked sinuses. And along with that, you want to use some Flonase nasal spray. That's the fluticasone here. Two sprays each nostril at night. It helps shrink down the membranes to try and stop that post-nasal drip. Now you see I have some Claritin, that's a long-acting antihistamine. The only reason I bought the name brand is because we had a coupon for it. The generic is called Loratadine, 10 milligrams. It is the same exact thing. Go with whatever's cheapest. Uh, this here is just Vicks Vapo Rub. Uh, put that up in the nostrils. I guarantee that is going to open up your sinuses temporarily for uh, a short little period of time. Now, one thing I want to point out is, check out these two products here. Equate Motion Sickness Relief and a bottle of Equate Motion Sickness Relief. They are two different products. As we get closer, you'll see one of them is Meclizine, 25 milligrams. The other is Diamond Hydronate, also known as Dramamine, 50 milligrams. Now, the Meclizine... The, the other name for that is Antivert. So you should use a Meclizine product if you're having any vertigo issues. Use the, uh, the Diamond Hydronate if you're actually having nausea. Sore throat products. I put these two down for a reason. Now, this hauls, when you turn it over and you look at the back, the active ingredient is menthol. Menthol's pretty good, but when used alone, it's pretty worthless if you actually have a sore throat. The Chloroseptic, again, that's a name brand. That's just because we had a coupon for it again. 
really all you need to do is look on the back under the active ingredient section and you see it has menthol and benzocaine 15 milligrams you always want to get the 15 milligrams that is the strongest allowed by law it will numb up your throat it'll numb up your tongue it'll numb up your cheeks but you're going to be able to eat and drink without being in a lot of pain the last two items I have in my top drawer I have a handy dandy pill cutter here uh, if you ever need to split a pill uh, you can do it with that that is extremely cheap they run just a few bucks and then one of the most important things you can have in your your medicine chest is a thermometer now this is extremely important because you would not believe how many people I have coming into the clinic stating I've got a cold I've got the flu I've got blah 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 um, if you have the flu if you have an infection you have a fever if you don't have a fever it is more than likely allergies or post nasal drip or some other little minor thing that you can take care of but uh, fever equals infection so that's all the top drawer stuff let's move on to the second drawer now the second drawer has all of my cough medications some stuff for oral sores you know uh, canker sores aptus ulcers some uh, gastrointestinal stuff like antacids and uh, diarrhea and constipation so let's go to the respiratory stuff first the uh, old tried and trusty Vicks Vapo Rub, absolutely love it. Uh, works very well as a temporary cough suppressant. Rub that on your chest. Uh, not only does it feel good, but it actually will shut down that cough for a little while. This is my absolute favorite cough medicine. Again, it's a name brand, but you can find the generics out there. Um, again, we had a coupon for it, so we, it was a couple dollars cheaper. So we got that one. A lot of the medicines out there, like Robitussin DM, Mucinex uh, DM, some of these other ones, they only last like four hours. Uh, you end up going through a couple bottles a day. The Delsum is a 12-hour medicine. You only have to use it twice. Works extremely well. That is the only one I use anymore. I can take it at night. I, I can actually sleep through the night without having to get up and, and take a couple swigs of, of my cough medicine, and I sleep better. Now, if your cough continues for a while, you might end up having to use an inhaler if you get bronchitis. A lot of people use these and then don't save them. Those things have about 240 actuations. That'll usually last about three different episodes of bronchitis, so don't throw them away. Look at the expiration date, but if it's still good, you know, keep it around. Uh, medicine for canker sores and, and stuff like that. Um, just keep it on hand if you have someone that uh, that's a little bit more susceptible to those. Now, I have two different products here, and this is going to illustrate another point. This Pepto-Bismol works very well. This Pink Bismuth is the same exact thing. So, when possible, you always want to get the chewable tablet versus the liquid just for size purposes. I mean it's a lot easier to uh, to use this than any of the uh, any of the other stuff the liquids and if you have antacid problems you know big bottle of Tums never hurts they're chewables if you have real bad problems you might want to get something with omeprazole 20 milligrams like a Prilosec and uh, that'll help with your acid problems. Now, let's get on to constipation. Uh, we see a ton of this. So, the very first thing a gastroenterologist would tell you is use a fiber product. Now, I don't have one out here. There's plenty of them, though. Uh, Metamucil, Citrocell, those are all liquids. Uh, you know, you add to a liquid. There's uh, tablets that you can take. Uh, my wife and I prefer the gummies, uh, gummy fiber. They're, they're sweet, they taste good, and they work very well. The, uh, if, if that doesn't work uh, and you notice that, you're, that your, your feces is pretty hard, you want to get a stool softener, either Colace or, or Docusate. 
that will soften it up for you. Um, and then if that doesn't work, well, get you some Miralax. I really like this. It's, uh, it is gentle on the system and it will get you going. And if that doesn't work, the last fail safe is magnesium citrate. You drink a half bottle, wait an hour, drink the other half, um, and that will more than likely get you going. If it gets you going too much and now you have diarrhea, that's when you move on to the Imodium. That is a wonderful little product. It's also called a loperamide, two milligrams. Take two capsules of that with the first episode of diarrhea and then one capsule after, maximum eight per day. Uh, that will plug you up. Now, once you, once you start seeing that it's form, taking shape, uh, you want to stop it. You, if you keep taking it, uh, well, then you're going to come back and you're going to have to need these products again. So kind of walk that fine line so that you don't get too bad. Now, that's all the stuff in the second drawer. The third drawer is uh, for pain, fever, uh, hemorrhoids, that, that counts with it, and then all my band-aids and antiseptic antibiotic. And I know you're probably saying, Pat, you told me the injury wasn't really in the med kit. Okay, you caught me on that one. Uh, but I do throw this in here because I don't want people raiding my, my uh, trauma bag just to get out some band-aids and antiseptics. So I have uh, some povidone iodine pads. Uh, this can sting a little bit, so for the kids, you, you maybe want to get some Bactine that uh, it, it's no sting, it's, it's pain relieving, and it will clean it up. Uh, then you may want to put some uh, triple antibiotic cream on there. This is the generic of triple antibiotic. Uh, I have different types of band-aids. These are latex-free for people that have a latex allergy. In addition, we have some uh, bacitracin ointment in little disposable packets. For the band-aids, you want to get the multiples. You know, this is an assortment size. Uh, everyone's cuts come in different shapes, sizes, everything else. So just get you the assortment packet. And never forget, always get Batman Band-Aids. Batman is awesome. And you always should have some Batman Band-Aids standing by. For pain, uh, we, we use a couple different products here, okay? So acetaminophen is just uh, Tylenol. Ibuprofen is Motrin. Um, you can actually use these in conjunction with each other. Uh, I use ibuprofen three times a day. Now you notice that is a pretty large bottle. The reason for that is is because the adult dose of Motrin is 800 milligrams three times a day. So you can pop four of those bad boys uh, every eight hours and that is maximum dose. In between the eight hour doses at the four hour mark, you can take acetaminophen. So that's, uh, that's some pretty good pain relief and fever control whenever you're alternating those two like that. We also have a Benadryl stick uh, for any insect bites or, or ant stings, anything like that. That will help. We have a generic hemorrhoid cream. That is the same thing as Preparation H. Uh, it, it never seems to fail that your, your hemorrhoid is going to pop up like in the middle of the night on a weekend. And it, you really don't want to go to the emergency room and pay an emergency room price just to get some hemorrhoid uh, medications. Uh, not only is it embarrassing, but it's a complete waste of time for the emergency room crew. For muscle aches, in addition to the Motrin and the Tylenol, we've got some Icy Hot. You can use Bengay, you can use Capsaicin Cream. All of those are wonderful products. Uh, you just want to put some heat on there, maybe some gentle massage, and all of that will help out. So these are the products that go into my third little shelf of this container and again all of this stuff fits in just beautifully and it pretty much covers everything that you could possibly need for that short-term you know symptomatic relief until you can schedule an appointment with your health care provider okay so one last thing that I want to cover with you before we we cut away from here is We've talked a lot about symptomatic relief, and so let's talk about 
when to use an emergency room or an urgent care or your primary care provider. So emergency room is exactly what it stands, uh, what, what its name stands for. Uh, heart attack, stroke, major fractures, arterial bleeding, things like that. That's what you go to an emergency room for because when you walk through those doors that say emergency above it, you're going to pay five to ten times higher the cost than what you would um, if you went to your family practice provider. Now for routine cold, sickness, uh, illness sort of stuff, things like that, uh, minor fractures, lacerations, things like that, you can go to an urgent care center for that much cheaper than what an emergency room is going to be. And they will still see you. Uh, a lot of them uh, stay open late in the night. Some of them are open 24 hours. Uh, get to know the urgent care uh, near, near where you live. Obviously, the cheapest route is going to be with your primary care provider. Some of them uh, have same-day appointments. Some you're going to have to wait two, three days to see. But that's what a lot of this over-the-counter stuff is for. Um, if, you're, if you're just minorly inconvenienced, uh, you've got this nagging thing that just doesn't seem to want to go away, okay, use this stuff until you, you know, make an appointment, until you can get in to see them uh, in two or three days. Um, if you if you do have a really high fever, you're you're having an inability to keep food down. Uh, you think you might be getting dehydrated. Okay, you might have to go to the urgent care center. It's going to be a little bit more than your primary care provider, but uh, I guarantee you it's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than than that emergency room. So try to keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully that's going to save you some money by going to the appropriate place. Um, instead of, you know, getting shocked by that big bill when it shows up a, a month after you, you were at the emergency room. So if you guys have any questions at all, uh, please email me. I'll be more than happy to, to answer your questions, especially regarding pediatric stuff. If you're not real sure what kind of pediatric medicines you should have in your kit, um, just let me know and, uh, and I'll probably put something out, maybe another video just on pediatric meds. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out and uh, we'll see you down the road.